Do you feel like you should work first and then play? Or do you feel like you get to play all the time? Following the video about punctuality, I thought we might dive a little deeper into what the differences are between the judging and perceiving processes, or the J and the P, what do they mean at the end of your type code. J is not judgmental and P is not procrastinating, as is often suggested. Going back to the original theory, Jung talked about the two attitudes of extroversion and introversion, where the psychic energy goes either outside to the object or inside to the subject. And then he talked about the four functions. Sensing and intuiting are irrational perceiving functions. Irrational because they take cognitive energy, but it's not a linear process. There isn't a decision attached to it. It's a perception of what is or isn't or could be or was. Thinking and feeling are the rational functions because they are based on reflective processes and decision making. So you have the S or N for sensing and intuiting and T or F for thinking and feeling. And those are the perceiving and the judging functions. Those two middle letters of your four letter type code are actually the meat of the theory. Those are the ones that you really want to pay attention to because Jung's theory was very much based on his 20 years of observing people in his psychoanalyst practice. When Catherine Myers and Isabel Briggs came up with a questionnaire about 20, 30 years after they've read Jung's book, they had to pick it apart and find ways to arrive at what the dominant function is going to be and whether the S, N, T or F are going to be in the extroverted or introverted attitude because those are the eight functions that you can come to, right? Four processes, two attitudes, four times two. And so they added the letters J and P, Myers-Briggs added the letters J and P to denote which function was in the extroverted attitude. What does that mean? If there is a J at the end of the code, then the thinking or feeling is extroverted, which means the sensing or intu intuiting is introverted because the theory is one of balance and the functions and attitudes balance one another out. And if there is a P at the end of the type code, it means sensing or intuiting are extroverted, which means thinking or feeling are going to be in the introverted attitude. And now you know whether the extroverted function is also the dominant one if there is an E at the front of the type code. If there is an I at the front of the type code, then the introverted function, whichever it is, is going to be the dominant one. And that was the MBTI type code explained. <laughs> I hope that helps. The way that Myers-Briggs explained the significance is not just which function is extroverted, but also they called it, I believe, the world or, and the life organization. So somebody with judging preferences was described as enjoying to make lists and checking off those lists and getting things done, which is in keeping with the process because the judging types like to have a decision, right? Like it's the, that's the point of the function, it's to make a decision and to arrive at a point of certainty. And then the perceiving types are described as organizing their lives a little more pressure prompted is one of those words, which by the way, if you take the MBTI step two instrument, they talk about facets. So pressure prompted is very much a perceiving characteristics. And I score a five out of five on that one because I do like the last minute rush of energy just before the deadline, just to get something finished. I have a J at the end of my type code though overall, because I also like to start at the beginning and make sure that I get there in time and with peace and quiet in between. So the Myers-Briggs explanation of J and P are about how you organize your life. I think another way of looking at it is also about how you view time and what your relationship to time is. One of the activities that I used to do when I was doing type workshops with teams is do you feel like you should work first and then play or do you feel like you get to play all the time? Someone with a J at the end of their type code is very likely to say, no, let's do the work first and then we can relax. Or in other words, we can't relax until the work is done. And somebody with perceiving preferences has a, a more fluid approach to time because when I said the judging process likes to have the decision because that's the point of the function, the perceiving process likes to 
stay open to possibility and stay in the moment. It's much more of a process. They're more likely to say we can play anytime because the deadline is always going to be there and there's always going to be more work tomorrow. What I was getting at with my punctuality video, because I have judging preferences, my husband has perceiving preferences, was because that particular morning he took his time having his breakfast and I knew that he had a meeting, so I was looking at the clock because if I had a meeting, I would make sure that I hurry some things up to get to the meeting on time. He was in the process of having his breakfast and he wasn't going to be rushed, so he was going to be a couple minutes late to the meeting. Just to be very clear, it was, I think he was three or four minutes late. To me, that's late. To him, it was part of finishing the process that he was in the middle of and then going to the next thing. There are lots and lots of other examples also where his perceiving preferences show up in our relationship, for example, for me as someone with a J at the end of my type code, because we are both dominant judging types, right? I have dominant extroverted feeling preferences, he has dominant introverted thinking preferences. But that P does make a difference because when I do something, I concentrate on it and I start it and finish it. I don't often get sidetracked and start something else in the middle of doing the first thing. He will start making dinner and then thinking of a song and then going to play the song and then going to Apple Music and then looking up who sang the song and then figuring out when it was first recorded and then remembering that he had stuff in the dryer and then coming back to maybe making the dinner. So there is a lot of activity happening because in the process, one thing leads to the next and there isn't a straight line, it's a lot more squiggly. My lines are generally a lot straighter, although I have also been known to get sidetracked. Like when I talk, for example, I wonder if this is true for you as well. If you'd like to leave a comment, that'd be great. The judging preference and probably the German upbringing have also taught me how long things take. When we are out, just taking a walk, I generally know what time it is. He doesn't. When we go shopping or plan our day, I generally know how long something is going to take and whether making a plan for 4 p.m. that afternoon is realistic or not. So I know how time works. I know how long stuff takes. I know usually what time it is. I'm quite good at guessing and knowing where we are in space time kind of the moment. My husband, not so much. My late friend, Alia, was quite similar. She had ENTP preferences. She was always late. She was never on time. And she said she doesn't know how long things take. She doesn't know how long it takes to take a shower or she doesn't know how long it takes to write a report. She doesn't know how long it takes to get from A to B, getting ready and being invited to a thing. She, just, she doesn't know. She really does her best she did her best and she really again this is where the german upbringing comes in she felt so bad every time she was late and she would call like every good german will call you when they are late even if they are five minutes late they will call you 10 minutes in advance to let you know that they are five minutes late and see if there's a tangent okay i wonder if that's a general thing for people with a p in their type code that maybe they just don't know how long stuff takes or they don't really have a grasp of time and how long time is with the different activities that they then get distracted in. And so generally speaking, squiggly line for the P's and uh, more of a straight line for the J's. Here's why I think that is fantastic. I so appreciate my husband's preferences even though, yes, it makes me nervous that I know he's going to be late. But that, like I said in the video, that's my issue. That has nothing to do with him. He's an adult man. He's living his life. He's a professional man and he's doing his thing. What he's also doing is teaching me patience and teaching me to relax and just allowing me to not having to feel like I have to be so productive all the time. Because this is another thing I feel like 
I've grown up with in Germany, the work ethic that was instilled in me and just the expectations that I have of myself and this kind of drive to be a productive member of society and be punctual and do all the things is I find relaxing very difficult. And in the 15, 16 years that we've been married now, he's shown me that it's okay to take a day off and to just be on the couch. He can do that for a lot longer than I can, but I'm getting better. So yeah, as much as there are differences in terms of punctuality, in terms of organization, if this resonates for you in your workplace and any teammates that you might have or any student collaborative situations where you know you want to get the project on the road and other people are faffing about, just wait because during the faffing about maybe they have ideas or maybe something else is going to come to them that you can then use in, in for that project as well. It's not all bad. It doesn't mean that they don't have their lives together. It just means that they go about it in a different way and that they might be a little more relaxed and that they can teach you something about having fun along the way and not just gain this sense of accomplishment from ticking the thing off your list. Because yes, we have that as well. I hope this was interesting, illuminating, inspiring perhaps to look at your significant others in a different light and I'm going to leave it here so let me know if you have any questions see you next time